So, the Firebrand, the first of the heavy Generation 2 Elite Specializations I want to talk to you guys about. This is a really interesting one. Uh, for those that don't know the real backstory to this Elite Specialization, many years ago, the Guardian had access to a couple of Elite skills that were known as Tomes. Uh, what these Tomes did was they uh, changed your skill bar as you held them like a kit and gave you access to a lot of really interesting abilities. Most of them were quite weak, though. It was stuff like full heal everyone around you, but on a massive cast time and just generally not very accessible. There was particularly the Tome of Wrath I had a lot of fun with, a uh, incredibly offensive book that uh, I tried so hard to work with in PvP but never really quite clicked. Those skills were removed and their functionalities rolled into other abilities, like for example the Signet of Courage. This here, this fully heal nearby allies ability, this was once one of the books. When the devs got rid of that stuff they said, hey guys don't worry about it, we will give those back one day, we'll figure figure out a new way of implementing them and you're just going to have to sit by and see. Well, with Generation 2 of the Elite Specializations, the books, at least in a sense, have returned to the Guardian and that's by the way of the Firebrand. Firebrands are zealous lore keepers, skilled in conjuring magical fire. They use mantras to charge spells for instant use and wield axes to cleave their foes at short range. Their virtues are replaced by conjured tomes of lore. These tomes act as weapons with which to rebuke enemies and protect allies. So let's talk about it. Uh, Firebrand's general niche and slant is uh, what many of us speculated it would be based on a Living World Season 3 map. It is about condition damage, it is about burn specifically, which is something very core to Guardian in the first place. Heavy burn and also support, specifically offensive supporting of your allies. It really feels like that Seraph set, the Logan Thackeray set that came from uh, Lake Doric was kind of made for the Firebrand and we may see that character becomes a Firebrand in the expansion. I guess time will tell. Uh, what the Firebrand gets is an axe as a main hand weapon. This was something Guardians never had before. So here you can see I've got my beautiful pearl axe here and they get mantras as their utility skills. Uh, mantras themselves previously only existed on Mesmer and they kind of had a big rework just the other week uh, which has rolled into the way the firebrand works too and I want to talk to you guys about because it very much plays into this ammunition system. So uh, I think that's pretty much all of the main stuff to talk about early on. Please people stop aggroing mobs onto me and we will uh, have a dive into some of these sexy new things. First let's have a look at the axe. A lot of the holosmith which I showed off in a previous video. Um, we really don't have too much to look at here. It's three abilities, very simple, and really gives you an idea of the condition damage slant that this guy's got. So here's our also, it's an attack chain that goes two bleed, two bleed, and then two burn. Uh, and bleeds and burns are really the main thing you're going to be doing. So core cleave, clear at your enemy, cleave at your enemy, sorry, with a physical and magical axe. So one is physical, one is magical. Then we slice through our foe again physically and magically as our weapon is heating up. And then finally we unleash our searing axe in an overhand slash following up with a magical edge. So this is not a, a formal overheat mechanic, it's just the flavor text of the, uh, uh, the uh, abilities. It's not like the hollow smith, but here we go. So this is what the animation looks like. We kind of get a physical axe and this nice big ghostly burning one. It feels very true to Core Guardian, I would say, uh, in its theming and its visual effects and the kind of things that it can do. So what I was most excited about with this was the idea of uh, Guardians being better at supporting allies and maybe even like uh, some kind of like tanky sustainy stuff too, which I think the Core class really needs. Uh, and I don't know how much of that we're really getting here, but at least it does do pretty great Condi damage. So here you go, this is the auto, this is how it functions on the default amulet. I'm sure we can pump it up to do a lot more condition stuff, but there you go. That's the uh, Axe one. Maybe Moving on to the Axe 2, we have a symbol. So this is the only symbol that's come uh, here. If you remember, the Dragon Hunter actually got a symbol too. It got the symbol, and I think it was the skill 4 on the longbow maybe? Uh, so this is symbol of vengeance. Symbols are a staple of what Guardians do and can be traded in a great many ways. So here we've got symbol of vengeance. Cleave your axe into the ground, reducing enemy movement and carving a razor sharp symbol of vengeance. So this is cripple. This is 5 bleed. It's also some reasonable flat damage on there too. So right. let's drop this down. Right. 
Really, really, really pretty looking symbol. Probably the most gorgeous looking symbol they've put in the game so far. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty cool. Uh, we can place this down in front of us. Uh, now, as a symbol, like I say, this is uh, quite interesting in terms of traits. In fact, there are a few different traits we can look at with the axe. Um, so, for example, if we come through here, on the honor line, we actually have writ of persistence here. Uh, which makes the symbols last longer and it buffs their radius and it makes them heal allies So you guys uh, guardian mains will be more than familiar with this So we can actually trade the new symbol on the new elite specialization to make it way bigger now uh, Way 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 prettier and uh, make it much 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 more effective and also because this is actually an axe uh, where well, you can actually run in radiance too. I think it's in radiance. Yeah, you can run right hand strength which increases our crit chance on main-handed weapons, which of course we have now just got. And so this didn't work with longbow, because longbow I think was two-handed, so right-hand strength didn't work, but it will affect your axe stuff. So here we've got a symbol that crits way more, lasts longer and is bigger, okay? And heals allies. Uh, and that healing of allies component on it might be exactly what you want if you're going to try and go for a split condi healy kind of guy um, on a firebrand support sort of deal. So uh, so yeah, and then finally we've got the three. Once again, we can get increased crit chance from right-hand strength. We've got blazing edge which conjures a magical axe to rake our enemies towards us. So this is a pull. It's actually at 600 range, which is fairly good. So I'll give you guys the max distance on this as we cast it. It's about here. Uh, it will go through three targets. We swing the axe out, as you saw there, and it pulls the guy in. Now, this is a golem, so he blinks back to his original location very quickly. But that's the actual pull you can do there. You can grab people in, and it's a little bit of burning on there as well. So very, very simple on the axe here. There's, uh, if anything, probably even more simple than the hollow, hollow smith's sword. Um, next, let's talk a little bit about the mantras. So these are your new utility skills. And I'm actually going to start off here by logging on to a different character on my account just to give you guys a sense of regular mantras so that you understand what the actual rework was before I then go to talk about Firebrand. It will only take a second. So mantras used to work in the they were a long cast time and then you'd have them charged up. And at that point, uh, you could spend those charges and then you would have to recharge the full thing again. So it's kind of like you could cast it very quickly, but there was always that big penalty of having to wait on a long cooldown, a long recharge, right? So I'm going to demonstrate here with uh, Mantra of Resolve. It's probably the best one to demonstrate. So we can cast the Mantra of Resolve. It will take a long cast time. We'll get our charge. And now we can pop it to cleanse people around us. And we can pop it again to cleanse people around us again. And just like it always used to work, now we're on cooldown and we're waiting for it to come all the way back. But the rework did change things slightly. See, you now have more options with the mantra, right? We can cast it and channel it. And now when we use the first charge, if instead we wait before using our final charge, we only have one more charge left. If instead we wait, you'll notice around the skill UI right now, there is a white line drawing around it. What that's actually showing us is our recharge count, like the ammunition mechanic. When that maxes out, it's just passively doing it in the background, we'll regain one of our mantra ammunition. Wait for it. And there it is. And now we can pop it again. And now we're waiting for recharge. And by pacing the mantra casts out like this now, I can choose if I want to double cast or I can just kind of maintain it and keep pulsing out the cleanses when um, I like them kind of more periodically. And by doing this, I can kind of infinitely cast power cleanse here or any other mantra um, as many times as I like without ever having to re-go all the way back down. Now, if I double cast... It will go on the full cooldown, and then I'll have to reactivate. But that's how mantras work now. And that's true for the Mesmer who gets mantras. That's uh, that's the first, that's the initial baseline implementation of how mantras now function in Guild Wars 2. And it's they're much more useful under, under this scenario. They're much more useful. Now, what's cool about the Firebrand is that it kind of goes one further. The Firebrand doesn't just get two charges to its mantras. It gets three. And the final one, should you choose to cast it to fully expend the mantra, that is actually supercharged. That's not true on the Mesmer mantras, but over on the Firebrand it is as the elite specialization. So here, well, let's demonstrate on the heal skill, shall we? So straight into the utilities, we've got Mantra of Solace. This is our heal. We're going to charge it. And uh, when we charge it up, we get access to um, restoring reprieve. And so this is just like I was showing you the mantra here, except instead of two charges, we've got three. So I can pop it, and now we can wait for another charge to come up. And you see that this one's recharging much quicker. You see that white line is drawing a lot faster. So we can wait a little while, and then when that fills up completely, 
we can pop it, we'll go up to three, and then we can pop it again. Now we get three charges on the Firebrand, so I can double pop it now if I like. And here I've revealed the final version, the supercharged version. But when the ammunition comes back in, if you watch closely, it will flip back to the lesser version. So restoring, restoring Reprieve. God, these skill names are a real mouthful to get through. So restoring Reprieve, if we choose to just pass all this out gradually, we can heal ourselves for a reasonable amount, but then also give our allies Aegis quite frequently. And giving allies Aegis has some crazy synergies when we get to the traits. So that's very, I mean, it's just cool in the first place. So this is like really powerful Aegis pushing out on our allies very, very frequently just from this heal. And we can go Aegis, and then we can go Aegis again. And then finally, we get the final charge. The final charge is a much stronger heal for us. It's like a triple strength heal for us. And once again, it's even more Aegis for us. So gain significant health, and then we grant Aegis to us and our allies. So if we have all the mantras ready, we can push out three Aegis for our friends and heal ourselves very significantly. But at the cost of using that final charge, if we choose to do it, we lose the mantra. Remember, we lose that for good. Oh gosh, we're under the effects of someone else's something there. We lose the effects for good, and uh, and we have to wait a fairly hefty cooldown. We have to wait 30 seconds. So these mantras are real risk rewardy on this one. We have to be very careful about exactly whether we want to spend that final charge or not, because it is very punishing to do it. Um, but yeah, this is a great heal skill. I really like the idea of this because it's uh, it's really not healing us solo very much, but it's so powerful in terms of giving block to our allies. Uh, it'll be kind of curious to see. Also, by the way, I think that the skill icons for these mantras are my favorite out of all the Gen 2 Elite specs. I love these skill icons so much. I'm not quite sure why. I just think they look so clean and, and nice. Anyway, moving on. I know that's a pretty boring thing to talk about. Uh, let's get to some other mantras. So, um, this one here is tons of quickness. This is probably the most significant mantra that's coming on the Firebrand. It's Mantra of Potence. So, we recite a hymn from the annals of Chirai Osa to hasten ourselves and our allies. All the flavor text on all of these abilities is super like lore heavy. It's kind of weird actually. It feels like an aberration compared to the others. So we're going to channel this mantra and we'll go like into our mantra form. And so we get three charges. Every time we pop this, similar to how the heal was giving ages to our allies, instead this time every time we pop it, we're giving out quickness and five might. Five might, that's not bad. That's quite a lot of might, okay? Um, and so we can sort of pass all these out and we can keep quickness up on people. Uh, in short, the Firebrand is amazing at keeping permanent quickness up on everyone. It's like really, really good that it gets it incredibly comfortably without even having to spec too much concentration. It's like stuff from the Mantra of Potence, right? But so we can double cast it. If we, choose, if we go for the triple cast and the final big finale, Overwhelming Celerity, uh, we get more quickness, double the duration, and we get eight might instead of five. All of these affect five allies around us. Um, and of course, that's pretty cool. It's not a huge bump up in potency. And you'll notice that a lot. The final casts often aren't that crazy good. Um, but I, I think the reason you'll use the final cast more than anything quite often is because you've been forced into that situation. Um, and it's obviously quite punishing to use that last one because you're going to go on the full cooldown. All right. So if we do cast this, we go for crazy amounts of might. I'm now on 13 might here because I double cast at the end there. And now we have to wait for the mantra to fill fully recharge. And remember, not just wait for it to fully recharge, but then you have to get through the clunky long cast time of re-summoning the mantra itself. So using these final things is quite uh, punishing. And you want to be careful about when you do them. There's a real balance to maintaining a mantra instead of cycling all the way deep through it. So there you go. That's the mantra of potence. That is a very, very powerful one. Um, let's quickly swap this off to show you guys the other one. So here we've got... Um, uh, the Mantra of Law. All right, so we recite for the Ritual of Cleansing, and this removes conditions and speeds recovery. So um, this is just going to pulse out regen. We can go regen on our allies and two conditions cleanse, and then we can go regen and two conditions cleanse. And on the final version, we can go double regen, and we can actually do two condition cleanse again, but we turn them into boons. So we can flip burning into Aegis on our allies and we can do stuff like that. So that again is very strong. That's what the final charge does. So, uh, and you can really see what the design is here. One, we've got one that's given a lot of quickness and offensive support. This one cleanses a lot. Probably Wild versus Wild is more interest in that than anything else. Next, we have the Mantra of Flame. Mantra of Flame, just want to be clear about this. Guild Wars 1 Mesmers had mantras, uh, but the mantras in that game were based on the various elements and then there were some other ones. But you had like Mantra of Earth and Mantra of Flame, Mantra of Air and stuff. They reduced damage you took to certain elements. 
Uh, but they never came back. Manchester did come back on Mesmer and Guild Wars 2, but not the same kind of way. Uh, so here we get Mantra Flame comes back. So this is kind of a reference to GW1 in a bit of a weird way. Uh, but yeah, so Mantra Flame, prepare a chant to sear your enemies. Also, they're being described as chants. Uh, which might be some kind of reference to the anthems and things of uh, Paragons in GW1 or maybe the uh, Kurziks in the Echo Veiled Forest, who knows. But here, so this one's very offensive. Flame Rush. This time, every time we pop it, we get um, fire. We get to burn people one stack for six seconds, and we can just do that every 15 seconds as we gain more charges. But the final version is actually uh, triple burn. So if we dig our way through the whole stack here, we put five burn out, and then we wait for it. So this one actually doesn't excite me too much, but there you go, that's Mantra Flame. And for DPS oriented people, maybe we'll find that they just hold that and pop it every now and then. And then uh, lastly, we have Mantra of Truth. So uh, we prepare the Tenants of Truth to debilitate our foes. Uh, so the ability we get here is Echo of Truth, and I'm really not so sure about this one. So Echo of Truth, right, we get to inflict people with conditions, and the conditions that they've chosen are actually really strong, right? So it's Cripple, Blind, and Weakness. And that's great. That's going to really hurt and inhibit people who are trying to get in your face and beat you up. It's going to really hit, hurt, hurt the amount they can crit. It's going to make them miss. It's going to make it harder for them to get to you. So that's all very strong and very interesting. Um, but then the last one is called Voice of Truth. Now, what this does is it gets rid of the cripple and turns it into an immobilize. And it adds five vulm. They say reveal a harsh truth to your enemies before you, devastating them with conditions. And I don't know, I don't know whether I'd describe that as devastating them with conditions. Especially because that immobilize you can see there, there's actually a trait that affects mantras that means they all immobilize on the final charge anyway. So it's kind of like you just get five Vuln on top and they take away the cripple. So I'm not so sure, but hey, there you go. So this is the mantra of truth and um, hopefully they find a place. I, I mean, if this is supposed to be an offensive... Um, Condi thing. I, it's interesting they never put any condition damage on it. Maybe they just wanted to leave that for the Mantra of Flame. They didn't dare to go for a bit of bleed on the Mantra of Flame. They didn't even put very many stacks on. But hey, so there you go. This is uh, this Mantra as well. And you've got the Mantra of Truth that you can mix in. Obviously, running a pure Mantra build, it would be a very silly idea. You just want the tech choice that's useful for you at that moment. Then lastly, this last bit's actually quite interesting to me. We have a, an Elite Mantra that's never existed before. Uh, Mesmers do not have an elite mantra, so how have they gone about this? Well, a lot in the same way as they did with the heel score, actually, in my opinion. I really like it. This is Mantra of Liberation, and again, World vs. World players, I think, will be really interested in this. And until they start designing PvE, and I guess PvPers as well, but until they start designing PvE that's got a bit more hard CC coming in, and people start properly teching against it. Uh, we've got this, Echo Remnants of an ancient pamphlet from Varby that urged Elonians to freedom, grants stability and swiftness to allies while breaking their stuns. So this is crazy. I really like this. I like AoE stun breaks. I think they're really fun. And uh, this can do it like mad. So every time you pop this, you will AoE stun break your allies and then put stability on them and then put retaliation on them. And retaliation, of course, is heavily tradable as a guardian. Uh, so that's crazy. And your charge time is every 15 seconds. So you can like stun break your team, stun break your team, stun break your team. Oh, it's so, so cool. The final version as well is just kind of a bit stronger as we've seen so much. Instead of one stab, it's three stab. Your whispers guard your allies, stabilizing them and bre breaking stuns on them while weakening enemies, the flavor text says. I'm not quite sure what about that weakens enemies unless there's something not written on the tooltip or the design's changed at some point because they don't seem to uh, have listed anything. In fact, there is another bit of an odd thing with the tooltips. When you trait these, the uh, mantras are supposed to charge faster when you trait them. Uh, but I think the mantra of flame doesn't for some reason or the tooltips bugged or whatever. But hey, okay, so there you go. Those are the mantras. That's the axe. Uh, then, and you might be thinking, okay, WP, this seems alright, but th th there's not too much going on yet, just yet. Well, that's because the main game and the main funsies on this is actually to do with our F abilities, where no longer do we just fire and forget them, but we actually get those tomes I was talking about, or something like those tomes, at the start of the video. But before we just go into those, I think it's really important that we look at the traits first, which is a slightly different order than I've been doing for the other presentations, but I think that this one will work a bit better for you guys. So let's have a quick look here at the Firebrand traits. Um, 
And we'll, we'll look at virtues a little bit later as well. well. Okay, so these have changed a lot. So you always want to think of virtues and virtues can supercharge them. So we'll, we'll talk about that maybe in a bit. But so uh, let's go line by line. Let's look at the middle line as always, which uh, is where we've been starting on the others. Uh, and so first, miners. We have got purity of word. We gain knowledge of Elonian law, igniting a fierce drive to purge corruption and manifesting our virtues as mystic tomes. We also gain access to mantras. Uh, so then our next miner, every single firebrand will have this swift scholar. If we ever equip or stow a virtue, then we grant quickness. So F1, F2, and F3, they all give us books now, these tomes. And when we start reading it, we get quickness. And when we put it away, we get quickness. So that's pretty nice. Quickness is a huge part of this. And you'll see here from the Grandmaster Minor Y, imbued haste, we get increased to all of our at these attributes when we have quickness on us. And this really defines Firebrand to me. This is it. Firebrand is about condition damage, it's about healing and supporting, and it's a bit about uh, defense. I think that if they can really hone in on those three ideas, then it's pretty interesting, because those are three things I think that, uh, as a Guardian, I'm quite interested in being able to get access to. So as long as we have quickness, we get massive buffs to these attributes, and those are massive buffs. 250 to each of those stats is huge. So, uh, those are the miners, that's what everyone will get. Now, for the middle line... We're looking first at a line all to do with quickness, really, as far as I remember. Yep. So even more quickness stuff here. So we got Liberator's Vow. We grant allies quickness whenever we use our heal skill. And so you might think, oh, yeah, that sounds kind of interesting, Wood of Potatoes. But remember, we're on a mantra. So when we channel the mantra, I think we should give people quickness. When we use a charge, we give people quickness. And uh, obviously it's an internal cooldown of 12 seconds, so not every single charge will do it. But uh, yeah, you're popping this a lot, so that treat can go, that trait will go through quite frequently, every 12 seconds or so if you play very well. So you've got to consider that when you are also um, popping the, the, this ability. So now if you look at the mantra, every single part, it says quickness is here, quickness is here, quickness is here. Uh, and trust me, you want to give a lot of quickness out to your friends. I'll show you why in just a second. Here we've got stalt with speed, uh, which is that whenever we grant ages or stability, we also grant quickness. And so you'll see there it has a five second internal cooldown. So we should only be able to give two seconds of quickness every five seconds. I think this is bugged right now though, in that it doesn't actually have an internal cooldown. It, see, you see how it says this can affect multiple targets simultaneously. So what does that mean? Well, let's go back to a core guardian skill for a second, shall we? Like retreat. And I think this is the main one everyone's been talking about. So retreat is put Aegis on people around you, right? And so what this means is that when I pop retreat as a firebrand with this trait, I give everyone Aegis, which then also gives them quickness. So even though there's a five second internal cooldown, it should affect everyone at least once anyway. So there, as you can see, we just gave all these people quickness on a really nice range as well. And I think people have been saying that with the right boon duration and alacrity and stuff, it basically means if you take this trait, you can just cast retreat off cooldown and you've given permanent quickness to a group of five people around you. Like, it's insane. Um, so yeah, more quickness, and that's also very fun. And now here's where that quickness really starts paying off. We get quick fire. 10 second internal cooldown, but granting quickness to an ally also grants them Ashes of the Just. So we haven't seen Ashes of the Just just yet, but it's something that the Firebrand plays with a lot. So what this is, is um, it's kind of like a Venom. It's like Arcane Power. Uh, it's got two charges. Their attacks burn. And those attacks should work from my condition damage. Hopefully they've done it that way. If they haven't done it that way, then they'll probably change that. Um, but so if you build a lot of condition damage, you give people Ash of the Just whenever you give them Quickness. So that means that Retreat gives Swiftness, Aegis, Quickness and Ashes of the Just, and people are starting burning, right? So that's going to affect five targets around you, or however many your actual ability did, and each of those is going to be two burns. So it's going to be like 15 burn or whatever, just from casting Retreat. So that's very fun, and that, as you can see, hopefully is how you can augment your quickness a lot. Uh, let's go to the top line now, because uh, this has got the Mancha thing, and we were talking about Manchas very recently, before we all forget about them. So up top we have Unrelenting Criticism. Uh, so this is to do with our axe. Axe skills will gain the chance to inflict bleeding. Uh, the symbol of vengeance will also now daze on its initial strike. Okay, so you look how much we can trait this axe, okay? We can have the symbol now dazes, it's bigger, it heals, it does all this stuff. And every pulse of this has a chance to inflict a bit of bleed now. A uh, 33% chance to be putting bleed out. So you're just sh shooting out tons of bleed and tons of burn on this character. Uh, and that's not even mentioning the fact that you can go like Radiance and take a lot of other burning stuff like Radiant Fire up here, which increases the duration of your burning and makes you put Zealot's Flame on yourself and stuff. So uh, yeah, that's all pretty fun. 
Next, we have weighty terms. This one's going to affect your mantras, and it's what I, I mentioned before. So it means that your mantras charge faster, 20% faster, and it also means that the final uh, ability that you use on all of them now inflicts a bit of a mobilization. So you'll see that here, the one that already inflicted a mobilization is now up to four and three quarters of a second of immob. Right, and that's without any condition duration. So if we bump a lot of very heavy immobilized duration up, that's crazy. That could be like a, a, an eight second immob from Voice of Truth. And that's on five targets. <laughs> so it's very, very, very strong. Uh, you know, we're talking like entangling root style stuff here. Though it doesn't pulse, so one cleanse will get it off of people. But you get my point anyway. It's very, very, very strong. A long, long, long immob. Thanks to that mantra. Oh, and you can be putting out a lot of immobs, honestly, through uh, have, having a lot of these mantras rolling. And lastly, we have, uh, honestly, a Grandmaster I'm not that interested in. A stoic demeanor. Inflict slow on foes that we disable or immob. Seriously. I don't know. Slow's okay. This just feels a bit boring to me, really. I don't know. Maybe you guys have got some other thoughts on that. Uh, and yeah, I'm sure it can be strong in its uh, certain places, but not quite in line with some of the other Grandmasters that I've seen them do. Uh, so yeah, if we disable someone, we put a bit of slow on there. Not quite sure what the through line is of this top set here. It's just about sort of impairing people with condies and things. We got days, we got a mob, we got slow, but there you have it, right? Um, and so finally, the bottom line, and this is where we can start looking at the tomes a little bit more. So this one's already very interesting. We have Archivists of Whispers, and that's that our virtues gain additional pages. So what is this? Well, uh, let's take a look. Now, if we press, first of all, we've got F1, F2, and F3, and they will passively give us stuff. F2 will passively heal, right? Uh, F1 will passively every now and then cause us to uh, burn. F3 will passively sometimes pop Aegis on us, just like we'd expect as being a Guardian. But then we've also got these dots over here, and you can see it says Tome Pages 0 out of 5. So when we press one of these, like say the Tome of Justice, We'll summon this beautiful book. The animations look so gorgeous, okay? And we get a whole new skill bar here. A whole new skill bar! And um, we have these lights that have now lit up. We have five out of five pages. These are basically charges for this kit as we are holding it. So we can only actually use five of these abilities before we have to drop the book and wait for it to recharge to use it again. So five charges is default, and that's enough to use everything at least once. Not that you always will want to. Think about the way people use Lich Form and stuff like that. But um, they've given you five at least to pop each of the skills. However, you can trait Archivist of Whispers, and it will add you another three pages. So if I drop this and now I summon this book, we actually have eight pages now. And so if you really value the actual abilities you're getting out of these tomes, then that is uh, that is what you can play with there. So that's this, and basically the bottom line is all about the tomes. It's kind of like the bottom line is a mini version of taking the full virtue specialization, which also is all about affecting those tomes, right? So here also we've got legendary lore, and that's that tome skills will gain bonuses from scribbling in the margins by ancient bars. Do you see how flavory it is? Uh, but so yeah, now our F1 will uh, increase outgoing burning stacks. Uh, our F2 will be regen, and our F3 will be Aegis, okay? Uh, that's from scribbling in the margins. And lastly, we've got Law Master, which is that the skills themselves gain reduced recharge, uh, which is not really that worthwhile, I feel like, because you only get eight casts anyway. But also, when the tomes are on cooldown, you will still keep your passives. And that's great. If you want to run like a supporty guy that's also buffed the F2 passive from, uh, what is it, the Valor line, maybe? Uh, if you're doing that, then you're... Um, um, then you're going to benefit from that a little bit more. So that's the bottom line. I will also run Virtues here. So Virtues, you can pick one of the books to supercharge, basically. Permeating Wrath, Battle Presence, or Indomitable Courage. I'll just take Indomitable Courage as it stands. Uh, we can run this to Condi Cleanse when we pick up the, the, the second book. Um, and then, you know, we can do increased damage with Aegis or whatever the hell we care about. Uh, and let's look a little, uh, have a little bit of a look at the books themselves, shall we? So first... We have uh, the first tome, the Tome of Justice. Uh, these do not run out, by the way. Once you're holding it, you are holding it. Now, you can drop it by stowing the tome with either a weapon swap. Well, does this actually work? Does it matter whether you drop with E or you actually have to use the this? But anyway, if you stow the tome, we will get quickness, if you remember from that other trait. Um, but so here's what we got. We got chapter one, which is Searing Spell. Fueled by tales of the desolation in Istan, you incite a great swelling of heat before you. Uh, so this is just some spammable burn. As you can see there. 
And it's quite a lot of spammable burn, again, because we've traded it. And it's doing double stacks now. Not to mention that we've also got uh, that other line on, which has given us more burn. So that's cool. Uh, you got chapter two, which is igniting burst. We ignite the air around us in an expanding burst. There's going to be four stacks of burn. I mean, the damage of this really goes up as soon as you trade for it. So there you go. You can see that we get a ton of burn there. Uh, and F1, of course, justice. It's all about damage. It's all about burn, really. Uh, here we have Heated Rebuke. Now, I actually really like this skill. This is a 900 range, ground targeted pull. I mentioned on the Hollowsmith video the idea that we might have, you know, sort of uh, something else we can go to instead of just temporal curtains all the time. This is a lot like that as well. You pull people beautifully into one another from range, just like if you're a Mesmer with a Temporal Curtain or something. I really like that. Not much damage on there, but still. Uh, chapter 4 is Scorched Aftermath. Uh, detail the suffering in fire and blood inflicted during Vabi's occupation. I can't wait to hear more about Vabi's occupation. Um, and so we can cast this here. This is actually a fire field, by the way. So it's a giant AoE fire field that we got here that actually lasts a long time. Sick damage on that. You just saw we went up to a ton of burn there. And a very short cooldown, actually, now that we have traded. I'll show you guys that one again. Very pretty one. Okay, so really, really crazy. And you can pull people into it. Very cool. Okay, and I ran out of charges there because I'd cast this friggin' thing too many. And finally, we have the uh, last. This is Epilogue, Ashes of the Just. So, recall the memory of fallen heroes granting allies the searing blades of justice. So, here you see Ashes of the Just again. Remember, we're pumping this out on allies. Uh, when we uh, grant them quickness. Well, we're doing it here as well. Uh, if we have a look at this friend that stood next to us, when I pop this, we're going to put two burn out because of our trait, but also we're going to give this to him, and he gets three stacks this time. So his next three attacks, and myself as well, will also inflict burn. So you just saw in a single auto there, I put four burn out, six burn, eight burn. I mean, the burn is just crazy, guys. So there you go. That's the Justice Tome. Um... <laughs> I probably should have shown you a lot more of this, actually, because uh, it's it's kind of the crazy damage on the tomes that I think that's going to excite most people. We've got our super, supercharged uh, symbol there as well. Okay, cool. So that's the first tome. That's the Tome of Justice. Let's move on to the Tome of Resolve now. So this is your more supporty uh, kit here. We've got all the beautiful pages floating around us. I mean, if you guys haven't really been paying attention to the animations and things, you should really pause the video and see what it's like. Okay, so the auto is uh, Desert Bloom. Tales of Desert Blooms create a wave of healing for your allies. Uh, and it's an okay heal on five people with regen. Uh, this is what it looks like. Um, a lot like uh, the old tome, actually, I think. Uh, here we have Radiant Recovery, Chapter 2. Release magic from pages detailing the rebuilding of Vabi. Cleansing conditions on nearby allies, and allies are healed for each condition removed. So if you do pop this, this is a double Condi cleanse, and if you do get two Condis off of people, it will heal them up quite a lot. Next, we've got Azure Sun, Chapter 3. Inspired by countless poems describing the comforting powers of the water-reflected sun, you can grant boons to allies. This one, I'm not so excited by. I mean, a lot of this feels very world versus worldy to me. But here, so we got regen, we got vigor, and we got swiftness on five targets as down. we just place that down there, like so. And so this is your little, like, swiftness bot thing if you want, if you're not running your staff, since they nerfed the uh, loot stick. Next, we have Shining River. So we're going to release a torrent of pages describing the water cycle of the Ellen River. Heal allies and grant them swiftness. It's so obvious the lore of this that they're from Vabi. It's crazy. Uh, but yeah, so this is actually quite a big heal. And this, again, is on uh, allies. It doesn't say how many allies sometimes. Like, they're really inconsistent. I wonder whether any of these go up to 10 targets, because we will see on some of the elite specializations they have 10 target cap stuff. Uh, but yeah, so, and this is a water field also, very short cooldown, and you can cast that very frequently. And then finally, the epilogue. Eternal Oasis, purify your allies with the waters of Amnoon and increase the healing that they receive. Uh, so this one, it's funny because the epilogue you think you cast last, but you're going to, probably you're going to dip in and you're going to cast this first, because you get Eternal Oasis, 33% increased heal effectiveness. So if I cast this on Cup Noodle Consumer, any other heal that goes on him for the next little while is going to be 33% stronger. So all these other ones that I now have access to will be 33% stronger. And you'll notice the cooldown of this ability when traded is just long enough for when Eternal Oasis runs out. So you can actually, as long as you're in this tome and you have pages, you can maintain Eternal Oasis on people for, you know, anyone else maybe to do other healing and things as nothing well. So that's also down. a fun thing there. Just kind of lots of heals and cleanse. Nothing totally mind-blowing here or different, but... What can you expect, really, I think? And then, so finally, we have our last time. This is the time of Courage. This is trade out the ass because of the Virtues line. Let's pick this up right here. So we get quickness, we get all that good stuff as we go into it. So, unflinching charge. Roused by tales of mythical sunspear charges. Ground and motivate your allies before you. So you can run around spamming the auto to give people stab and swiftness, which is just super strong. 
Uh, and again, on five targets as we go. Uh, and of course, you'll run out of pages eventually, but still, it's very, very, very strong. And we're even giving eight. Why? We're giving Aegis out on this? Holy crap. Is that because of the Virtues trait? We're giving Aegis? That is crazy. That's so strong. My gods. Okay, wow. Um, let me just watch him here. We are. We're pulsing Aegis out. Aegis stab and swiftness on an auto. That's obscene. Okay, there you go. Uh, next, we've got chapter two, Daring Challenge. As the tales recount of Churai, taunt your enemies by issuing an insightfully inciting challenge. Wow, it's every ability gives Aegis because of our virtue straight. Every single ability. That is absolutely bonkers. What? That's so much block. That's insane. And remember, remember, let me just remind everybody, when we give Aegis, we grant quickness. And when we grant quickness, we grant quick fire. If you, if you trait this properly, it would be like this, right? Every single ability. Oh, it's crazy. Oh, wait, hold on. No, th this is competing with legendary law. Right, it's not because of virtues, it's because of legendary law. I see. All right. But still, oh, so those are opposed. That's going to sting. That's going to really sting. Never mind them. So yeah, uh, the skill two, daring challenge. As the tales recount of Chirai, taunt your enemies by issuing insightfully inciting challenge. So this is actually taunt and pretty refreshable taunt. Every four seconds you can taunt someone. And with some content duration, that will last quite a while. I wonder whether they're going to build encounters that the boss will only aggro on someone who taunts him every 30 seconds or something. And then you can actually have, uh, or every 10 seconds or so, and then you can actually have firebrand, uh, like, tanks that are doing it because they're specifically grabbing the taunt. That would be an interesting interaction, but it's, it's not down to the balance team to build stuff like that. It would be the raid team. Uh, here we've got Valiant Bulwark. Uh, we, where we manifest the shimmering purity of the desert sun, reflecting enemy missiles. So, yeah, this is very Guardian-y. We can drop this ground target at 900 range. It's a nice big area that we can establish with um, uh, enemy reflection. That's not deflection, that's reflection. And again, on a very short cooldown. These things are just so powerful. Here we've got Stalwart Stand. Recount the stand of Alone and Loyalists against Palawa Joko, granting resistance to your allies. Whether this is referring to the 250 years ago law, or longer than that, actually, or the more recent attack of Palawa, we don't know. But yeah, lots of resistance for people. It's a light field. It's a stun break for us. I don't think it's a stun break for everyone else. Um, but yeah, it will pulse resistance out on people, as you can see here. And another gorgeous animation. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, we have to wait a while. Oh, no, we don't have to wait a while. We can also run renewed focus, if you remember, to instantly recharge these tomes and get straight back into the books. Oh, that didn't work. It won't recharge our virtues. Arena net. That should totally work. So, hey guys, uh, I'm editing in here about a day later, right at the end of the weekend. Uh, so this idea where we use our Tome of Courage and then we use Renewed Focus, the core Guardian Elite, which uh, is supposed to refresh their cooldowns, that was just broken. Uh, it does actually work. It's still broken. Why didn't it work there? It is just broken. I have done this on um, a stream, and I've done this at various moments where this actually does work. So I'm not sure what exactly is going on there. It must be some certain trait combination, but this does work. And apparently it's just an oversight and one of the like clunky little things that's currently broken for the demos. Uh, I'll point out another very cool synergy as well while we're here. I was just showing you guys the... Uh, crazy burning on the justice tome and some of you might have looked at that and thought well okay WP that is a lot of uh, burning but surely it's not that great because at the end of the day I'm gonna have to put the tome down and I'll be on massive cooldown but there are ways to circumvent that so here just to show you the burn a little bit more here I'm running um, some burn from core guardian I'm also running the mantra flame and we're just gonna basically throw stuff from our tome out uh, and you might think, okay, we're on cooldown with the Tome of Justice. How do we uh, get that back? Well, it's actually very simple. If you run the Radiance line, this trait here, remember, does exist. This was a lot of fun on Dragon Hunter where you can continuously throw the spears. And it's fun here as well. Renew Justice. Whenever we kill someone, we get F1 back. So I will demonstrate that here. This is a bit like some of the Dead Eye stuff. Uh, we can splash tons of burnout on people. That's 8 burn, 10 burn, 12 burn just on the autos. We drop the book, and as soon as a target dies, if we got experience, that is, this didn't quite work. As soon as the target dies, we get our tome back, and we can immediately be back in it. And so here we go, back into the book. All this Aegis is just obscene. Uh, so we grant resistance and Aegis, and then finally we've got the five, which is the epilogue. Unbroken lines. Recalling the memory of heroes past, enchant nearby allies with formidable defenses. So we give Aegis, we give protection, retaliation, stability. 
<laughs> just all the crazy OP stuff and also this extra buff here, Unbroken Lines, which is 300 toughness for the people around us on a 12 second cooldown. So you can see that we pop this here. Now, Unbroken Lines will also stack with Strength in Numbers, which you can run from your core stuff to actually bump a lot of toughness up onto your team at once if you really wanted to. Um, and so, yeah, that's uh, that's basically how the final tone works. So they're all very strong in their own rights. They're always accessible. It's essentially, you are as a uh, firebrand, guys, let me put it this way, and maybe this will be kind of exciting to think about. You are a character that has 10 skills, weapon skills available to you because you're, you're a weapon swapper. You can have, you know, your axe torch here, which the dev set up, but also a staff or a scepter focus or whatever on the other side. You have 10 skills available plus another 15. Not counting the fact that the skills themselves, reading the books, is also doing stuff. Okay, so you get access to a ton of stuff for any specific situation, and uh, that really is the way that the Firebrand goes. It'll be interesting to see how the tuning works here, whether there's other any, any really broken things or odd interactions with the rest of Guardian, but that's what they're getting for Generation 2. And what I really want to see is the uh, other teams of the company build content that really works very well for this, and we'll see how it goes. Let's see what you think about this one. Are you, are you digging the mantras? Are you digging the, uh, you know, sort of absurd damage that we can proc over here or uh, or what so let me know guys thanks very much for watching <laughs> and I will see you for the next one we'll probably go back to light armor next I mean it's crazy it's actually crazy that book is is kind of disgusting